After nine years of this NDP Liberal government, never before has so much been spent to achieve so little. Despite having doubled the national debt, today Statistics Canada confirmed that GDP per capita has fallen again for the sixth time in seven quarters. Under this Prime Minister, Canadians have seen one of the steepest falls in the standard of living in our history. Why is this Prime Minister spending so much to make Canadians so poor? Mm -hmm. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives just can't resist talking Canada down. Yeah. That's why we are not hearing from them. Because we're in a about horrible eight, state economically. Four months in a row being within the Bank of Canada's target range, and in April, the lowest it has been in three years, at 2.7%. That is why we are not hearing from them that last year Canada attracted the most foreign mm -hmm. direct investment per capita in the entire G7. The other thing we're not hearing from them is all the programs they're going to cut, starting with the National School Food Program. The Honourable Member from Charleswood St. James, Assiniboia, heading The fact of the matter is that a Canadian standard of living is declining. In the United States, GDP per capita has grown more than 8% since 2019. Right. Our economy is now underperforming the United States by the widest margin since 1965. Right. Well, under this Prime Minister, his government has grown morbidly, morbidly obese. More Canadians are visiting food banks than ever before. This is economic malpractice. Why is the Prime Minister spending so much to make Canadians so Poor. Yeah. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, yet again, these Conservatives are relentlessly talking Canada down and concealing their austerity agenda. The reality is, Canada has added 1.3 million more jobs than we had before the pandemic. The Canadian economy is 104% the size it was before the pandemic. The rate of growth second in the G7 only to the United States. And Mr. Speaker, we have preserved our AAA credit rating with a stable out. The honourable member, the honourable member from Halliburton Kawartha Lakes. Speaker, the latest number from Stats Canada shows that under this Liberal government, Canadians have seen one of the steepest falls in living standards in our country's history. This means our quality of life has now dropped to the same level it was eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Employment rate is up from last year. After nine years of this Liberal government, Canadians are worse off. They're working twice as hard to take in half as much. In fact, Canada's economy has stagnated and Liberal policy is to blame. So why is the Prime Minister spending so much to make Canadians so poor? The Honourable Minister for Innovation. Mr. Speaker, it's amazing to hear the Conservative talking down Canadians, Canada and our prospect, Mr. Speaker. Around the world, Mr. Speaker, people are talking about Canada. You know what? Yeah, in a horrible light. We have received the largest level of investment, Mr. Speaker, in our economy. You know what? Because we have the best workers in the world, Mr. Speaker. That's right. Because we have renewable energy. Because we have trade agreement with our G7 partners, Mr. Speaker. Right. Because we know how to make things in this country, Mr. Speaker. And while they talk us, they call they talk down Canada on this side of the house. We will keep pumping up Canada. We'll keep in profit this country and we'll bring jobs in this country. The honourable member from Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes. Speaker, the Liberals are ruining the economy. Production of Made in Canada goods and services has declined for the fourth straight quarter, the latest drop by 0.7% in the first three months of this year. Canada remains last of 37 market-based countries that haven't recovered from before the pandemic. In fact, Canada un underperforms the American economy by the widest margin since 1965. And sadly, Canada's economy continues to stagnate under this Prime Minister's uncontrolled spending and punishing taxes. So when, why is the Prime Minister spending so much to make Canadians so poor? The Honourable Minister for International Trade. Mr. Speaker, I would like uh, the Honourable Member to talk to the hundreds upon hundreds of Canadian companies who have come with me 
to many markets around the world where we have excellent trade agreements, where they are taking their services, they are taking their goods, they are taking their innovations, they are taking their creations, and they are selling. They are selling Canada around the world. And you know what they're doing in doing that? They're creating jobs. They're creating jobs yes, from coast to coast to coast. We need to keep talking up the Canadian economy and Canadian businesses, and we're doing this on this side of the house, and I want to know why you're not. I'm, I'm, I'm certain the Honourable Minister... Things are getting pretty heated. But I would encourage all members... I would encourage all members, please, to ensure that the questions and answers are directed through the Speaker. Tomorrow, the Auditor General will table her report on McKinsey. Now, the Liberals will try to hide their preferential treatment of McKinsey, but the procurement watchdog already said that this government creates criteria specifically designed for McKinsey. The Minister of Procurement also signed a $5.7 million sole source contract, despite her officials asking her not to for McKinsey. Wow. At a time where Canadians can't even take a summer vacation. Why is its government so hell-bent on giving $116 million to McKinsey? <laughs> Money laundering. For the travel public approved of Banque Canada. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I look forward to answering this question. My colleague knows full well that the Auditor General's work is very important, but also very appreciated by the Canadian government. We look forward to hearing their report tomorrow. We know that their report will continue to help us so we can go even further in the important work that we must all do to make sure that public services are delivered in a good and opportune way. And for the dental care system, that is working very well, especially in Quebec. The Honourable Member from Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes. Corruption, abuse, resignations, multiple investigations, and at least 150 million tax dollars illegally given out by Liberal insiders to other Liberal insiders and to themselves. That's Sustainable Development Technologies Canada after nine years of this NDP Liberal government and that Prime Minister that's just not worth the cost. The Auditor General is set to release a damning report on SDTC tomorrow. So will the Prime Minister shut down the billion dollar slush fund? Will he commit? to get Canadians their money back? And will he guarantee Canadians that none of these corrupt executives will get a dollar of severance? Not a dollar! The Honourable Minister for Innovation. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank my colleague for his question. In fact, as you well know, Mr. Speaker, from the moment we receive allegation, we started an investigation, Mr. Speaker, in order to make sure that we would uncover the truth and we would restore governance. We suspended funding of the organization. We now got a report. The chairwoman resigned. The CEO of the organization resigned, Mr. Speaker. We welcome the findings of the Auditor General. We proactively work with the Auditor General. And one thing I can we assure all Canadians we will restore governance, restore funding for this organization that is helping thousands of Canadians' company in this country. No, no, have no questions. Oral questions. Questions. Ah, the Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Drop some W's because Greg Fergus is missing. Le Comité pour la Sécurité. Mr. Speaker, the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians has indicated that members of this House purposely helped hostile foreign actors. Canadians have a right to know who and what the information was. The committee indicates there are members of this House that have knowingly worked for foreign hostile governments. Canadians have a right to know who and what is the information. Who are they? The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, uh, the Leader of the Opposition knows very well that no government, including the government of which he was a member, is going to discuss particularities of intelligence information publicly, so he knows better than that. But the good news, Mr. Speaker, is if he wanted to get the appropriate security clearance and be able to see the confidential report of the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians, he would be much more informed than he is now, and we would invite him to do so, so he wouldn't stand up and cast aspersions on the floor of the House of Commons without any information whatsoever. <laughs> Look at the seals, eh? Like, they don't even have coordinated 
Applause. It's embarrassing. The Honorable Leader of the Official Opposition. Mr. Speaker, we don't need secrets and confidentiality. That's what got us into this problem in the first right. place. Yeah. What we need are the facts so that Canadians can judge. Just like in the case of the Green Slush Fund, the Auditor General revealed $123 million of spending that broke the rules, $59 million of projects that never should have been awarded money at all, $76 million in money gone to companies connected to the Liberal appointed members, including 217000 to the chair of the fund that was giving out the money. Will the government support our common sense plan to hand over all this information to the RCMP for a police investigation? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, that today the Conservatives don't want to talk about the economy. But we know that the economy is the issue that most concerns Canadians. And that is why I am so glad to share some great news. Today, the Bank of the bank Canada, Canada, there she goes. Triple A credit rating. Da, 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 da. I knew she was going to fucking talk about this. After nine years of this Prime Minister, with the support of the Bloc Québécois, Montreal is in a state of chaos, crime, drugs, and disorder. Children need police escorts to go to preschool. So will this government accept the conservative demand? to refuse the exemption to the criminal code in order to prevent supervised injection sites from opening next to preschools and schools. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker. Who cares about that? Once again, it's not surprising. We lowered interest rates. <laughs> the Conservative leader does not want to discuss the economy. <laughs> but we know that the economy is the issue that Canadians care about the most. No way. And that is why I'm so happy to share a piece of good news, which is that today the Bank of Canada... Kids need police escort, and she talks about interest rates? What is going on? You can get shot any day, but interest rates went down 25 basis points. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. And interest rates remain 20 times higher they were when that member promised that they would go down. Remember when she said the big risk was deflation and low rates? Well, she was exactly wrong then, and she's even more wrong now. Mr. Speaker, six years ago, I said there was a carbon tax cover-up. The government wouldn't reveal the true cost of its carbon tax. Then they published information claiming everyone was better off. Now we find out that there is a secret report showing that with the economic cost... Oh, there you go, man. ...the vast majority of Canadians are paying more. Will the government end the gag order, stop the carbon tax cover-up, and release the report? Yeah. And she's going to talk about how great interest rates are now. Mr. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it is just really sad, sad. and shameful sad. that the Conservatives continue to talk down the Canadian economy and that they are unable to celebrate our great country. There you go. The is, Mr. Speaker, this has been a great week for Canada. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The Stanley Cup there is no amount of alcohol that can erase her screeching voice from my head. It is on a roll, Mr. Speaker. Our plan is working. Here, here. Good job, Freeland. You helped the Oilers get to the Stanley Cup Finals, I'm sure. Speaker, the government has put the parliamentary budget officer under a gag order. In fact, I have a copy of the gag order right here. And it says, this is a letter from the, from the environment minister to the parliamentary budget officer. 
The department is providing information that, that is unpublished. As such, I request you to ensure that this information is used for your office's internal purposes only and is not published or further. Show the screen. Show the screen. Show it to the camera. Show it to the camera. The cost of the, of the carbon tax. Why won't they end the gag order, stop the carbon tax cover-up, and release this report today? He should have showed it to the camera so people can screenshot it and zoom in. Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the person who seems to be laboring under a gag order is the conservative leader. Oh. And that gag order seems to prevent... She just likes saying the word gag. ...positive about our amazing yeah. country. The fact is, today is a day of really good news. The Bank of Canada has lowered interest rates. Canada is the first G7 country to lower rates. Our government's economically responsible plan has created the conditions that made that possible. Ah, oh, we all knew it was coming. 